In this video, we discuss the basic input output system. So what is the BIOS? It shouldn't be confused with the operating system. The operating system controls the hardware and software of a computer system and provides a user interface. Whereas the basic input and output system, the BIOS, is responsible for loading the operating system when the computer first turns on. It first checks that all the hardware it needs is connected and working appropriately using what's known as a power on self test or post. There are many different settings that can be configured via the BIOS. For example, we can see here the order of drives the computer will attempt to boot from. Now, typically your computer will try and boot from the hard disk. But what if your operating system or hard disk has become corrupted? Well, from the BIOS, you could ask the computer to first boot off an external USB port or an optical drive, thus allowing you to attempt to recover the computer. A boot program known as the bootstrap is used to load the operating system kernel into memory. At this stage, the operating system can take over and boot up the rest of your system. So as mentioned in a previous video, the initial startup instructions for your computer are stored on ROM. The BIOS settings, however, are stored in flash memory, and that's so they can be changed and are retained when the power is switched off. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What's the relationship between the terms BIOS, ROM, POST, Bootstrap and Kernel? That's as much detail on BIOS as you technically need to know for the exam. But if you want to know a little bit more detail about it and how the BIOS is involved in the starting up of the computing process, watch the rest of this video. So what actually happens the moment your computer turns on, right up to the point where you are in your operating system and have control? Well, let's step through and have a look. Well, first of all, we know the only place where instructions can be fetched from initially is the ROM, as this is read-only memory and has the set of initial startup instructions written into it at the manufacturing stage. Nothing exists in RAM at this point, and indeed, as we said earlier, the computer isn't even aware that your hard drive exists. One of the first things your ROM does is run the power on self-test. It checks that all the required components are present and are available. It actually clears anything that may still be in the registers of the CPU. Now, of course, if these are volatile, there would be nothing here, but it's a safety step that's done anyway. It loads the address of the first instruction in the boot program into the program counter. At this point, control is now passed to the bootloader program, also known as the bootstrap which carries out its own checks on the hardware. It checks for any BIOS on the hard disk or a storage device called a CMOS RAM. And BIOS is something we look at in more detail in a later video. It combines this with the basic BIOS stored on the ROM and then sends this to main memory. This file of information is known as the boot file. The computer is now essentially ready to load up your operating system. Now the operating system is normally found on the hard disk, but the computer's BIOS can be configured in such a way so it can be changed to check other drives first. This would allow you, for example, to boot a computer which had become corrupt off a USB pen or an optical drive. The operating system itself is now starting to take control. It searches for various other files, for example, a config.sys. It tells it how many files can be opened at a time, which device drivers to load. The operating system may look for additional files, for example, command.com, which contains additional information about BIOS and various operating system utilities. Eventually, the operating system is now fully booted up and takes control of the computer, the memory and loading jobs into the processor. This is the point where you're able to take over. 
Now this process here is still highly abstracted and indeed it will be different depending on the actual system you're using. Some of the files, for example, we've referred to on the right, like config.sys and command.com, are typical for a Windows boot up system, but not necessarily applicable to others. But it gives you an idea of the complex nature of tasks that has to go on when your computer is first powered up before you're able to gain control. Thank you.